Welcome back for all of our listeners. And if you're new here, hello, I'm Kimberly, your host, and this is The Parent Solution, your one-stop shop for all things educational. So this week's podcast is going to be a little bit different. I do have a guest today, uh, but he's asked to be on the show with me. Now, Ryan and I actually met through a networking event uh, back when I was still able to do in-person events, um, and we've since become what you might call connected uh, through business. Welcome, Ryan. Glad to have you here. Thanks, Kim. It's great to be here, actually. Absolutely. Did you want to tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so um, I've been a father for 14 years, almost 14 years in October, and both of my kids were the best mistakes I ever made, meaning we didn't plan to have our children. And I tell them this every day as well, but it was, and when I say it was the best mistake, and I mean that because where I was headed at that time relative to where I am today, they're the biggest motivators in my life. And I'm forever grateful for them for that reason. So I can say that they were mistakes only because um, we didn't plan to have them, but we also figured out how to have kids and raise them in, well, in a crazy environment. That's amazing. That's awesome. That's that's kind of cute. The best mistakes you've ever made. I've, not, I've never heard a parent uh, say that, but when you explain it that way, it makes sense. Um, kudos to you and your wife for being able to uh, to manage that and figure it out. Um, and I know that yeah. your boys, well, I know one of your boys personally, I know that both of your boys though have have great parents um, and you guys give them all the opportunities um, so I was just going to ask, what has the, because I know you, you mentioned, you know, in this crazy world that we that we live in, what exactly do you mean by by crazy world? What sorts of crazy experiences are you referring to? Well, crazy is a bit of a, uh, like a buzzword, to say the very least. But I, I, the world that I grew up in and my wife grew up in is significantly different than the world we live in today. But we do know with the the trials and tribulations that we went through actually served us in the future, albeit hard when we went through them, but are are definitely kind of a mainstay in how we operate our day to day. The craziness or the, the complicated piece comes into play is the schools that they're in now or the environments that they're in is that it's so easy to either offend someone or get to a point where, you know, kids just aren't operating on their own anymore. And, become essentially again another buzzword snowflakes if on a hot july day they just melt there's nothing they can really do they don't know how to navigate a tough situation without going to mom or dad mm. given the type of business that i'm in i have to be aware of if i'm not around are they going to have the tools they need and particularly as a as a man i know what i went through is a lot different than what my wife went through meaning mm-hmm. i had tougher challenges in a sense of physicality maybe whereas my wife may have tougher challenges from a emotional standpoint and i don't mean to be derogatory or misogynistic that's not where i'm no, getting at there is a there is a very big difference between both genders that they have their own respective challenges mm-hmm. so having two young boys who are stereotypical boys um i have to teach them things like how to throw a punch or how to use mm-hmm. their head in a situation instead of using physical violence use your words instead like being witty which right. can often lead you to get into more trouble, right? So. <laughs> right. Uh, it's not a bad thing, though. It's not a bad thing. Um, and, you know, you mentioned snowflakes. I know that that's a buzzword. But uh, in this day and age, being witty uh, is, is kind of a good thing, I think, because oftentimes, <laughs> like when I grew up, the saying was, uh, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And like, oh, my goodness, it was true when I was growing up because my parents always taught me, you know, like you have to talk to people and make sure that they know that you're upset about something or whatever. But the idea was that you don't let someone's words offend you or affect you negatively um, or take it to heart. Right. And and so I was raised in that sort of mentality. um, And a a lot of kids these days, I find they're not. So (laughs) so maybe being witty is the the better option anyways, because people tend to get further with their words um, when it when it comes down to it. Uh, yeah, that's definitely an interesting way of looking at it, for sure. Yes, yes. So, like, speaking of, of like, your your children and, and your boys um, dealing with, like, stereotypical uh, challenges that you might find as a dad, um, what do you find that the schooling experience has been like uh, for your kids over the past, like, particularly over the past two years? There's been a lot of changes, I know, globally. Yeah, no, the the pandemic definitely played a huge had a huge impact on our children's education. I think both of my kids are very intelligent people. And mm-hmm. I believe that they have the the wherewithal to navigate an elementary school classroom. 
However, when they were put in front of a, can, uh, a screen, um, we found that our kids were falling asleep. They weren't engaged. And this is not a fault to the teachers. The teachers were, they were, they were bound to what they had to deal with. Right. So they, you know, they course corrected and, and got us, got our kids in front of a, a screen, but it affected them in a way that their grades completely plummeted because they lost complete interest in something they already didn't even have interest in in the first place. The mm -hmm. biggest thing, what kept them going to school, which is true in the real world. If you hate your job, but you love the people you work with, you'll probably stay at that job. Right. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with school. Right. Plus, our kids, if they want to live at our house, they got to go to school, like at least elementary school. So right. there wasn't, they didn't have a choice. Like they have many other choices, but that's not one that they have a choice in, right? right? So their education dropped because of the format it was in, but it's no one's fault, but that's just what happened. Mm -hmm. And so, like you mentioned, uh, you mentioned that there's, that there were quite a few challenges and by no means, I know, I know a lot of teachers um, have, have really, I, I hate the word pivot, but look for the lack of a better phrase, they they had to pivot. They had no choice um, because schools were shut down and, and they had to have some sort of education. And the government, the Ministry of Education, just kind of dropped things in their lap and went here, figure it out yourselves. And so teachers, being the, the superheroes that they are, um, said, all right, we've got to figure it out. So, you know, we have online and, and that's the wonderful thing about online. Um, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, I think when you're when you're doing online education, you have to be very careful. Um, this is something I've learned. You have to be very careful with how you present it, because if you have a classroom of 30 some odd children or 25 children or, or even 20 kids and you're trying to teach an online classroom in the same manner in which you're teaching an in-person lesson, it's just not going to work simply because of the sheer volume of kids. Right. Uh, so I don't blame your kids for for losing engagement whatsoever. Um, and, and online learning, I think, it has that danger to it. The bigger the class size, the less engagement that there is, particularly, like you said, if they're not interested in the topic. I could just add to that really quickly. And not to toot my own horn, but I've done seminars on what would be deemed to be relatively boring activities, like how to maximize your retirement plan or whatever the number of, whatever the word, whatever the buzz was. I found ways to get people engaged. I would literally call people out. Like, hey, Frank, tell me what you think about this. Uh, yeah, dude, you weren't listening. If you don't want to listen, then leave. I understand the teachers don't have the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. But I think the teachers, I think they did need to do better in engagement. Mm -hmm. But that's my opinion. Not everyone's like me. I think differently than other people. And I do appreciate what the teachers have done. But I do think it was possible to create an engaging atmosphere. I just don't mm -hmm. think it was. They weren't. They didn't try hard enough. Mm hmm I think I think a lot of teachers, yeah, were thrown, uh, particularly uh, in Ontario, <laughs> because I know that 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 was a huge move uh, for a lot of teachers to be able to go from uh, from teaching in person and transitioning everything online. Um, so not trying hard enough, yes, but it's also the fact that I don't think they had the proper resources to be able to do that. Right? When you have teachers who have taught in person and have everything in person, all the resources and whatnot, the past you know, 10, 20 years, like to transition everything to digital, that was, I think, a huge, huge problem, um, particularly going into 2021, right? And people can say, oh, well, you had the summer, like, okay, but like, people have lives, <laughs> right? Like, you can't spend 10 hours right. a day photocopying things and uploading things and whatever, like, I mean, you can, but then what kind of summer are you having? A lot of teachers have kids, too, totally. right? That's totally fair. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, it was not something that was, it was not something that was, implemented properly I don't think from a get-go and so with all these with all of these issues um that the school experience has been like I know that uh I know that we have begun working together what what started this sort of this sort of uh trend towards alternative education for you or or um supplementary education for you yeah and I'm I'm very transparent human being so just just know that okay mm -hmm. Um, it doesn't take a whole day to recognize sunshine. And I think my youngest son has a touch of autism and to be put into a class and, and his friends have autism too. And I, I, and I'm not a doctor. I can't, I don't sell, I'm the, probably the last person and through probably saw I had my appendix burst and I walked around with it for a while. I hate doctors. I, I'm not, you know, I don't self-diagnose at all. Mm -hmm. However, having that type of, like autism, for example, in a classroom in which that you're trying to teach a blanket, um, like a blanket curriculum, 
It's not going to fit with everyone else. You can't put a triangle on a square and you can't put a square in a circle. So you got to, yeah. we had to find a way. To be honest, education is more important to my wife because she's American and Americans think education is the key to success. Whereas me, I barely made it out of high school. In fact, I think school is probably, it's only good for babysitting your kids during the winter, the fall, winter, and <laughs> early summer. Well, honestly, I, I mean, they don't like it. They're not getting anything from it. I think my kids learn more from, from us as, as a, as a family unit, mm -hmm. they learn how to navigate tough situations, you know, but again, you need the building blocks. You need to know what two plus two is. So right. I don't want to take everything away from our education system. It does serve a purpose, but my overall view of it, if you are, want something bad enough, you can go out and get it. So when we saw our youngest struggling with it, we understand that you have to have at the very least a high school education mm -hmm. to get anywhere in life to us like if he doesn't want to start his own business which i'm pretty sure he's going to but if he didn't he'd have to at least have a high school education well let's get it out of the way while you're here now so let's do it let's engage and i didn't i haven't shared my dismay towards the education system with my children it's just my point of view mm -hmm. but i so i encourage them hey go to school find something fun find something fun in math everything is math everything that we do is math find mm -hmm. something fun English, you need to learn how to speak, you need to learn how to be smart, figure out a fancy word and bring it to the classroom and throw it around. So I don't know if that answered your question. It was more of a rant than anything else. But <laughs> when we saw what Kai was, or sorry, our youngest was, edit that out. When we yeah, saw what our youngest was going through, I, because of our connection to the networking group, I said, you know what? My wife's like, let's get a tutor. Let's get a tutor. I'm like, well, I know just a person. Let's, let's <laughs> reach out to Kim and get her going. And I, and I have to say, I know you said you're going to plug me and I said, no, but I'm going to plug you today. I've never seen him so excited about doing education work, like educational things. Even like oftentimes after your session, we'd be off to a rink. He'd be in the car talking about it on the way to the rink. Hey, I learned this. I had to do this. And I'm like, holy crap. Like, dude, this is fantastic. You're interested in something. So you really turned his, his mind around towards learning. I don't know how you did it. That's your specialty, not mine. I have ways of turning his mind around, but I'm as bad as a different scenario, right? But in terms of education, it's something I'm not passionate about. You did. And it's really cool to see like how he's kind of utilized it in everyday practice. Your service is invaluable. Like, there's no doubt about it. He's looking forward to it every time. He's like, oh, can I do it in the summer? I'm like, are you dumb? But but he's excited about it, and that means a lot to us as a family unit. I honestly, I mean, I know that that your son really enjoys tutoring with me. I, I know that he really likes uh, that he really likes tutoring. He really likes his lessons, um, and he's always excited about the next project that we're working on and the next thing. Um, as you know, we actually recently just completed that that uh, marine biology project that he was super excited about. Um, and I really think that that's that's the way to go is is inquiry based learning. I know that's a huge buzzword. Um, kind of on the in the educational space, inquiry-based learning and student-led learning is a huge buzzword, but you you don't get to do those things in school. And so right. a, a large part of where I come from with, with teaching and where my business comes from with the, the teaching philosophy is inquiry-based learning and student-led learning because if they want to learn something, they're going to. Now, that being said, like you said earlier, uh, you know, you have to have the basics of like two plus two. You have to know math. You have to know English. Um, but you don't just get that through school, right, through sitting in a traditional classroom and, and like looking at the teacher and and uh, doing your worksheets and whatever. Right. Like education and, and learning is so much more than that. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I didn't know that he enjoyed his lessons that much that he's talking about them afterwards. That's cute. It's good to know. It was. <laughs> It was unreal. Like it's like it's like, dude, seriously? Like that's that I mean now I gotta ask you, so did you choose marine biology because he was interested in becoming a marine biologist? Uh yes. So he asked me, he said, uh he said, well, he he, you know, we were talking and, and whatnot when we were getting to know each other a little bit. Um, and I asked him, I, I get to, got to know a little bit about his interests and things that he wanted to uh, to do. And I said, what do you, I don't like to ask kids, what do you want to do when you grow up? Because I think that's very limiting. I ask them what sorts of problems they want to solve because that opens up a whole other discussion and you can create a career from the problems that you want to solve. And then you've got a purpose, right? This is exactly why we use you because we're the same mentality. We like, it, okay. If you want to become filthy rich, if, if rich is your goal, 
you need to solve someone's problem. <laughs> and the biggest yes. problem, what's the biggest problem? And, and I'll share something about him right now, which I share with everyone, um, even my clients. What's the biggest problem? Well, when we go to, to when we go to the beach, we have to drive 10 hours. Imagine if we could be there in five minutes. That would be a lot more fun, wouldn't it? Absolutely freaking lutely it would be. So his goal at one point in time was to be able to get us to Australia in 27 seconds. So I'm going to go to Australia for lunch. If I can get there for in 27 seconds, I'm going down uh, under. You, you, you bet I'm going for, to Australia for lunch. That's awesome. Exactly. He's, right? so he's a very creative that, 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 He is. And that, that, that mentality that you're instilling in what you teach kids is not in the general education system. It's not free thinking. And that is a huge concern for me. You need to be a free thinker. Yes, especially in this world that we are in um, today, Absolutely. because I think that the future of education, the future of learning, um, and the future just in general, is going to be very much based on what we, the people, and we as a society can build to help each other, right? And like you said, to solve somebody's problem, right? If we could solve, I mean, world problems on a larger scale, that would be great too, but you got to start somewhere. Um, so when I asked him and I said, well, what kinds of problems do you want to solve? And he started talking about, you know, how the oceans are dirty and like the animals are, are dying and we're destroying the rainforest with all of this technology and uh, construction and things like that. And I said, oh, okay. So you're really into animals. And he goes, yeah. He says, I really want to be a marine biologist. And so it just came out of him. Right. And, and I love the ability to be able to do that, to just, and it's, it's about asking kids the right questions. Right. Instead of instead of pushing a certain narrative or certain beliefs or or asking them uh, limiting questions, you 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 want to ask them questions that are going to stretch their imagination, that are going to help them grow, that are going to help them think critically. Right. As you say, a free thinker or a critical thinker, you want to be able to ask kids those types of questions, because like a lot of children before the age of, I want to say, 10 to 11, they have wild dreams, wild dreams. And then somehow they hit 12 or 13 and they all just kind of disappear. And that could be something to do with adolescence, but I think it has a lot to do with societal factors as well, right? When you it, kind of... Oh my God, it's it's parents and teachers. I remember being told a million times I couldn't do something. So much to a point that when someone tells me I can't do something, I'm going to do it. Just right? to prove you so, wrong. <laughs> And another thing I always tell Kai too, and on the lighter side of things, and I try to keep things light too, because it actually brings light to an, a, a, an otherwise serious situation. Becoming a marine biologist is not an easy task. It's a very admirable career, but he's going to land a trophy wife as a marine biologist. I remember back in the day, we used to go around to bars and try to pick up chicks and uh, I'm a deep sea welder. And we would say like, I'm in the deep sea, I'm a deep sea welder. I'm just here for a couple of days, you know, we're whatever. And <laughs> We were so successful. And I remember one time I said that to a girl and she's like, she's like, you're like the third deep sea welder I met tonight. Cause all my boys were saying we were, we're deep saying deep the same welder. thing. <laughs> oh my, that's too funny. Yeah. But, but again, and I, that's all like, that was well before my marriage and all that stuff, but it was more like, it's, it's more bringing light to the situation. So I was like, okay, you know what? Like, I want to do this. It's going to be hard, but there's some fun things around along the way to do it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And, and that's the idea, I think. Um, and kids have this children who, who have parents that encourage critical thinking and that encourage free thinking and that encourage dreaming, um, and building something, um, for themselves, right. Or for people or for, you know, a, a certain group in society or whatever it might be. Parents who have children, um, that, and they encourage that sort of thinking. I think their kids come out uh, a lot, a lot further in life at a much younger age, um, because you know your your kids being the age that they are, they're they're still quite young. And I I have never heard someone your son's age say that he wants to be a marine biologist. Um, and I and and we did that project that was completely centered around my marine biology, and he did the whole thing. I know he showed mom. I don't know if he showed you yet, um, but he was. No, really he hasn't. But. I'm going to go home and grill them on it when I, like when I get home tonight. When you get home, yeah. Well, mom got a certain score on it, so you better make sure you get higher. Otherwise, uh, he says mom is smarter than you. <laughs> In that area, anyways. <laughs> 
Um, well, that's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. but he was really excited about it, so I took it and I ran with it. Um, and that really, it when you think about it, that is student-led learning at its finest. And I, I believe, and and by extension, my business, that's the that's the mentality I bring to my business, and that that my business portrays is student-led learning and inquiry-based learning because that's what it's about. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so so Ryan, with all of that sort of said, um, what sorts of things like do you do you raise your boys with a certain mentality? Like, do you have a certain method of like discipline or or constructive criticism that you that you use with them to help them uh, be what we're calling better individuals and and help them contribute to themselves as adults? It, yeah, it it's hard to do this. I run a, a very busy practice, and it's hard to do this. But my wife's on board with me. Um, punishment should fit the crime. And accountability is the biggest thing. You are accountable for this. If this doesn't happen, X doesn't happen. It's not like we take your phone away if you don't do something. It's like you want to get to, for example, you want to get to hockey practice. Well, we have to leave by 445. The dishwasher has to be empty before we leave the driveway. If it's not empty, you're late for practice. And we've had to do that a few times. And when it comes to our younger son, who's not very sports oriented, you know, hey, if your room's not clean, you're not going to get this. You want another dog? Show me how the litter box is cleaned every day. If it's not clean, you're not getting a new dog. Guess what we don't have? We don't have a new dog because that litter box isn't clean, right? Mm -hmm. So accountability is the biggest thing and the punishment should fit the crime. So um, that's definitely one component as well. But the biggest thing that we do is a, a, a big fear for parents is having their kids die or kidnapped. And we know... The kids that are the kids that get kidnapped or the kids that are subject to abduction are the ones that don't have any self-confidence. So how do you build self-confidence in a kid? Well, you hear them. You have to hear what they say without making, oh, everything's going to be okay, little Johnny. You no, know, you I heard what you say. Well, here's the here's the pros and here's the cons of what's going to happen if you do what you do. Mm -hmm. But I make my children work out. I don't have to make my older boy work out because he's going to play in the big show in his mind. He wants to play in the NHL. But my youngest one, he's got a pull-up bar. He can't leave his room unless he does three pull-ups. Now, two weeks ago, he couldn't even do one. Now he can do three. Wow. And I said, no, you have, now you have to do five. And this all started about two or three months ago in terms of having him, like it, it's, it's always been happening, but having him understand the benefit of it. We had these hanging lights in our backyard mm -hmm. and he couldn't jump and hit it. He spent five minutes and then he just gave up and I said oh well I guess you give up I guess you don't get to hit the light I can hit the light I don't even have to jump mom can even hit the light and he's like oh I'm gonna hit the light no word of a lie 45 minutes later of him purely trying he can hit the light now and I saw the light go off in his head he's like oh my god I said if you want anything in this world you have to work for it it's not going to be handed to you mm -hmm. you have food in the fridge you've got a roof over your head you've got rides to places you want to go you've got a cottage you can go to We've got a vacation destination. You've got the world in your fucking hands, but you absolutely have to earn everything that you want. You don't want mm -hmm. the vacation property. We wanted that, but we worked for it. So those mm -hmm. are a lot of the things that we instill. Accountability. And if you want something in life, you got to work for it. Mm -hmm. We have okay. the means to buy them whatever they want. I got to give each of my kid a, an unlimited data plan on their phone if I wanted to. They don't get those things. Not <laughs> because at all. Because it's not something that they need. Uh, particularly at their age, they don't need to be spending that much time on technology. That's correct. Yeah, they don't need you. Don't need Google to live. I'm sorry, you don't need it to live. <laughs> I remember what when uh, when I was younger that like when I when I was uh, growing up that that the internet was just coming out, and I was fortunate enough to have a father who was in the IT business. So we were one of the first like families when the computers came out and like the internet came out and whatever that we had internet like in our home, right? Yeah. And we had very strict limits on what we were allowed to do. We had, when we had to make sure that we had our chores done first and X, X, Y, and Z had to be done before we went on the computer. And then we were on the computer to do homework. And if we, and my dad knew how to do this because working in IT, if we Googled something that he thought we should know <laughs> without like actually having to like look for the answer first ourselves, we got in trouble. That was a problem. It was a conversation at the dinner table. Why did you look it up on Google when you already knew the answer from ABC in your textbook? Right. So teaching them the limits of technology, I think, is a very good thing. I agree. But I also think having them being able to be fluent in technology is important because the way the world's going. However, mm -hmm. 
it's important to put the caveat in that when you Google something, you're getting an opinion. You're not getting a fact. Yes. So you have to take everything with a grain of salt, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's important for kids to understand technology. It's important for kids to be able to apply for a job because most likely it's going to be over the internet, 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we provide them Wi-Fi. We like you have unlimited Wi-Fi. You can go as long as you want. There's no there's no limitations to what you can use. But we ask that you spend a couple hours outside. You do physical activity. You lift weights. You pull up. You do push ups. Whatever it might be, create an environment in which that you're self confident enough that if you didn't have the internet, you'd be able to have a good time. How did you get around mm -hmm. when you were a kid? If you had to drive somewhere, were you? How old? You know, you're not gonna have to tell me your age. I'm sorry. But when we used to, <laughs> when we used to, when we had to get around back in the day, we would go to the computer, but we would go to something called MapQuest and yes. we would print out the directions yep. and we would have to follow those directions. Now yep. I plug it into my, my truck and I listen to the Waze girl tell me when to turn left. Right. Yes. I, yep. I don't need, I don't need it. I know where I'm going from most places in Southern Ontario. I do it. So I know where the cops are. So I know when to stop speeding. That's why I use weight. <laughs> At least you could be honest. I hope you encourage cool. the same level of honesty in your children. <laughs> um, no, For I remember. Sure, but I remember those days, the map quest days. Yeah. So you, I, I remember showing my oldest son a map. He's like, "What is this?" I'm like, "It's a map. It'll get you anywhere you need to be in in Southern Ontario. It'll get you there." He's like, "Why don't you just use Google?" I'm like, "What if what if the internet's were down? What would you do?" Exactly. What would you do? Yeah. Exactly. And that's the idea, right? Um, you know, working online and obviously running an, an online teaching business, and, like the internet is a beautiful thing. And and teaching children how to be fluent with the internet is is very important. Absolutely. But but it's also crucial to stress the skills that they need to learn outside of the internet, because if you don't have access to the internet, the internet doesn't necessarily have to go down. It could be something as simple as like, you just don't have access to it. What if you're right. like in another country? What if you don't have it? Because everyone these days has a smartphone, right? What if you don't have your phone with you? What what if you don't have things to help you with those resources? Can you get around without them? Can you do right. things without them? Right. That's I think that's just as important. So I love that you do that with your boys. When it was um uh the remember when the whole all of Canada was down with Rogers? Mm -hmm. Yes, with Rogers, yeah. It was, it, it was an old school snow day. That's what it felt like. It felt like an old school snow day. You couldn't reach anyone. You just kind of had to, you're stuck with your own devices. And I don't mean devices in smartphones, at the things you need to do to have fun. Yeah. You were, <laughs> it's you were left to your own devices. On the yeah. yeah. It's, it's literally how much it's, I can't run my business without the internet. I, I Everyone in my business has a laptop and they're glued to their laptop. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm so fat because I'm in front of a computer. <laughs> oh, out there Brian, you're not dress. fat. <laughs> Uh, whatever. I'm not search, searching for validation. That's not what it is what it is. But if those those guys I'm looking out of my window right now that are slugging those bricks and paving our roads, those guys are fit because they're out there making sure we can drive down the street. Mm -hmm. But if I didn't have the internet, I couldn't run my business. So here, who am I to talk, right? But at right. the same time, I feed my family, I give my family a good life. I when I go to my when I go to my cottage, my phone is Spotify. And that's all it is. Mm -hmm. I don't go on Facebook. Sometimes I post some stuff here and there. My wife is a postaholic. But that's fine. But I, I know how to step back because I grew up in an age without internet. I grew up mm -hmm. in an age when you had screen knees, you pour vinegar on it and you get back out there. You know what I mean? Yes. Yep. Wipe the <laughs> wipe the dirt off and uh and put some rubbing alcohol and you're fine. Good to go. <laughs> yeah. Because you don't want to get impetigo. I remember my grandma, you don't want to get impetigo, make sure you clean the dirt out. That's what she gave me for medical aid. Don't get impetigo. Okay. Make sure yeah. there's no date. No our, okay, cool. our thing, our thing when we were when when I was a kid growing up uh in the nineties was um uh, uh tetanus, right? And and my parents weren't necessarily concerned about it, but the idea was like don't don't rub up against rust if you have something that is uh that's open wound or whatever, right? So and nowadays you have kids that are wrapped in bubble wrap. Um and I think that that's something that's very much uh, I, I get the idea of wanting to protect your kids. Of course, you want to give your kids the best life, um, like you are doing yourself. But you you want to be able to give them the best life and protect them while also giving them opportunities and and teaching them how to overcome adversity, right? Which I think is a lot of a mindset thing. Absolutely, I'll tell you that I don't. You're not a parent, are you? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, I'm no, not. No, it's okay. No, I, no, that you're you're in line with my my thinking. The best way to protect your kid is 
to have it so they can live without you. That's the absolute best way you can protect your kid. So that means them falling down and dealing with it and figuring it out. I'm not around to help them, but I'm still here. They still got me. But I know I've woken up, Kim, and there's been blood in our sink and Kleenex everywhere because they got a bloody nose because they were fighting with each other, right? Especially during the pandemic, we would be asleep and they would stay up and they would and literally they... get into fist fights. And there'd be blood oh, everywhere, my. but they wouldn't wake us up. Not because they didn't feel they could. They just knew we would say, figure it out. You caused it, figure it out. That's mm-hmm. the absolute best way you can protect your kids is by knowing that if me and my wife and the beer truck turns too soon and we get we get killed, that our kids are going to be able to figure it out. That's the best way to protect your kids. Not if they get, if if your kid gets tetanus, we've got shit for that now. Get a tetanus shot. Yeah. You're fine. Figure it out. <laughs> but yeah. if you're like, don't ever get tetanus. Well, then you're going to get sick every time someone sneezes four blocks away. Oh. So that is the absolute best way to protect your kid is mm-hmm. by giving them a self-confidence and letting them figure it out for themselves. Mm-hmm. I'm People might call children's services on me now, like, because I don't, if my kid comes home with a scrape knee, you know where the band-aids are. We showed you where they are. We showed you what to do. You know how to fix your band-aids. For example, last night, um, I was kind of really happy about my office. So I, mm-hmm. I got a couple drinks. So I had, mm-hmm. I had a six pack of beer. Uh, my wife had some wine and I made, I didn't eat dinner. So I, I made dinner around 1130 just cause mm-hmm. just a busy lifestyle. Right. Mm-hmm. So I made this beautiful pasta. It's got like, it's, I just know how to cook. Right. Anyways, <laughs> my son comes up after he's playing hockey on his Xbox or whatever. He's like, Hey, I want some ramen. Can you make me some ramen? I'm like, Nope. I'm going to bed. I had a small plate of pasta. It wasn't too big because it was just before bed. It's just enough that I wouldn't mm-hmm. be hungry. Um, he goes, nope. I'm like, nope, I'm not making it. You, you know how to make, you know how to boil water, put it in, put the, put the powder in, you're fine, right? He, he's like, no, no, I don't have time. I'm like, you don't have time. <laughs> because what? It's midnight. You should be focusing on brushing your teeth and going to bed. Mind you, he, he wasn't feeling good, so he slept a lot, big part of yesterday. So he normally goes to bed around 1130, but it's understandable why it was up. Not making excuses. I don't care. My kids stay up late. They stay up late. They have to get up and figure it out, right? Exactly. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> so, so I, I, as I was, I said, good night, buddy. Love you. He's like, did you make my ramen? I'm like, yeah, it's on the stove. So what I did is I just put the oven on uh, the the ramen on the element because it had cooled off. I'm like it's on the stove, but it's not made. So when I woke up in the morning, there was a pot that he had made his own ramen, and I came home to grab something for the office. I go, hey, buddy, how was your ramen? He goes, it sucked. I'm like, why? Because you didn't make it. I'm like, well, did you have ramen? Yeah. Did you get full? Yeah. You're fine. Mm-hmm. Next time, clean the pot up and don't leave noodles everywhere. That, so that, that is like a regular occurrence in our house. That doesn't make me a super awesome dad. I've been a shitty dad before. There's no doubt about it. But as a parent, you have to learn as, as you go along too, right? Mm-hmm. Dealing with a 14-year-old versus dealing with a 9-year-old, that's a different fucking dynamic. Like, they're mm-hmm. two very different human beings right yeah. well, how do you deal with both and i think too that that i mean giving them the responsibility to be able to make their own food like at 14 years old at 14 years old you are more than in your right to say make your own ramen um particularly at that time of night if he's hungry um and if he's that hungry then he would figure it out um, and clearly he did and it just takes practice uh if, if he said it what well, didn't taste good or whatever and it just takes practice uh, for him to be able to do that on his own but practice makes progress as I tell your younger son all the time Absolutely. practice makes progress so the only way you're going to get better is if you practice um, and right. sometimes you know as as uh, adults we we think the same thing as parents we think the same thing that like it has to be perfect for your kid all the time it doesn't it's a good thing for them to be able to learn through experiences even if those experiences aren't perfect themselves a hundred percent a hundred percent. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I remember when we first started out, we were broke when we first had kids. We had no money. We weren't even living paycheck to paycheck. There was more months than money. And it hurt us so much because when my son, my older boy was playing rep hockey, which somehow we found a way to make it happen. All the kids around him, their parents were super rich. Mind you, they were 10 years older than us too, right? So there's like, they had more time to generate revenue. I think we were like 28 years old when he was playing hockey. Mm-hmm. Anyways. It made us, we, in our own fault, which I can admit, 
we gave a level of entitlement to our children because when we had the means, we went over the top. Christmas was outrageous. You couldn't even mm-hmm. see the fucking tree. It was so many presents. <laughs> but as a parent, you learn to like, okay, now wait a minute here. Everything's not perfect. We never had anything perfect in our lives. Nothing mm-hmm. was ever perfect. There was always something wrong that wasn't exactly the way we wanted it. The only time it became exactly how we wanted it is when we worked for it, right? So mm-hmm. navigating that world was hard. Not giving them anything to giving them everything because we could to now bringing it down to a medium. I guess mm-hmm. this is more about parents too than it's just as much as kids, right? Because kids' education falls on the parents. Mm-hmm. My kids came home to me. My son came home to me and said, I feel like a girl. You know what I would say? You're a boy. But wear a dress and see what happens when you walk out <laughs> in the street. And I don't want to get into the gender issue too much. But our kids know that there's boys and girls. And they also mm-hmm. know that there's other people that feel other ways. But right. your feelings are important, but they don't lead your life. And that's what we teach them as well. Right. I really like that. Your feelings are important, but they don't they don't lead your life. Um, and I think it's really, really important to take into consideration all of the emotions and the different factors that go along with such a decision um, if you truly, like, feel that way there's a lot of different there's a lot of other factors besides feelings (laughs) that you have to consider um right and and so that is always that that is my stance on the issue um live and let live but make sure that you're making the right decision absolutely like your emotions and your reactions on based on your emotions have consequences Mm -hmm. and if you can't accept those consequences or if you experience those consequences you may be able to manage your emotions a little better next time Mm -hmm. how do you manage your emotions Listen, I, I make a lot of money and I lose a lot of money at the same time. I, I told my wife, I lost a big case a couple months back. I told my wife, I have a couple, I have two choices here. I can curl up in a ball and watch Netflix and cry and hope everything's okay. Or I can just work extra hard and make that money back. Mm-hmm. What do you think I do? Right. Option and I make, sure my, <laughs> I make sure my kids see what I'm going through. Now, mm-hmm. I'm not afraid to cry in front of my kids. I just don't cry. It's, I cry when I see the Stanley Cup. I don't usually cry. Right. It's just not an emotion of mine, but I don't mm-hmm. think it's wrong. If my kids are crying, I'm like, man, up, don't cry. I don't say that stuff, mm-hmm. but I talk them through it. What is crying doing? Is it helping you release your emotions? Then release it. Have at it. Cry all you want. But when you're done crying, the problem's still going to be there. Mm-hmm. What are you going to do to fix it? And, and that, I think that step is missed a lot of, among parents nowadays. Mm-hmm. And, and it's what are you what are you doing I think the theme you could say of like today and talk about your experiences and all that the theme is is what are you doing to enable your children to live an independent fulfilled purposeful life with or without you because you're right at one point as harsh as this is to say at one point you as a parent are are 98% more likely to die before your children. And you want to make sure that they're set up for life before you get to that point where you can't help them anymore. I can appreciate the fact that my children do not have the ability to generate enough income to live on their own. Mm-hmm. So I've taken the means or they've taken the necessary measures to make sure that there's financial backing. But i have also taken the steps to make sure that if I'm not around, they know how to be a man. Mm-hmm. That's the right way to do it. And I know that's I a very it. offensive word nowadays, but there's a <laughs> lot of truth. Like we're a single income household. That's rare nowadays. And I don't want a cookie. I don't want a parade, but we do it. Mm-hmm. And it's because of my, my, my attributes of being a man, being able to have thick skin, to fight through the tough shit that no one else wants to fight through. Mm-hmm. Those are the things I want to pass on my kids more than anything else. Yeah. I don't want to pass on my house, my boat, my vacation property that I have internationally. Mm-hmm. None of that matters. What matters is if they can go buy that on their own if they want to. Mm-hmm. Because you've given them the opportunities and the skill set and the resources to be able to do those things for themselves. And I think that's yeah. the most powerful thing. Like, as you pointed out, I'm not a parent, but I think that's the most powerful thing you can give your children is, is to give them the tools and the resources and the skill set for them to be able to do it on their own exactly on their own you'd make a great mom Kim <laughs> well thank you well uh I'll keep that in mind I'll keep that in mind you'll you'll be invited to the baby shower <laughs> I don't do baby showers I'll tell my uh, no wife. okay but, uh, your wife will your wife can come <laughs> I, I I hate weddings too I don't even go to weddings 
Like, really? Wow. I hate right. I hate weddings, baby showers, steak and doles. It's all stupid. I, take me to a hockey game and then to a pub after. Life is perfect. Yeah, you're you're a hockey dad. You're a hockey dad. That's that's good. We all have our likes and dislikes as long as you can um live and let live within particularly within the family unit, right? And I think teaching your kids, I, I think you're doing a great job with your kids. I see Thank it with you. your youngest, teaching your youngest. Uh, he's, yep. he's got a good road ahead of him for sure. So thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. Hey, no, it, it's thank you for making my kid excited about education. Yeah, no problem. Just what I do. Just what I do. Well, that's good. Love it. Thank you so much, Ryan. I really appreciate your time today. Thank you for, for taking the time. I know you're super busy. I uh, appreciate your time and, and your efforts <laughs> and thank you so much. I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to having you back potentially in the future. Yeah, me too. And thank you for having me on the show. And I'm sorry, I'm I'm very transparent. I hope I didn't cuss too much. But. <laughs> no, of, of course not. I, you do you. I'm all about authenticity and, and being real with people. So uh, no problem. If you have any comments or questions, either about this issue or others that have come up for you, you can always find me on social media. It's Star Students on Facebook and LinkedIn or starstudents.learning on Instagram. You can also reach out through email, which is all over social media channels. Thank you, as always, so much for listening, and I'll be back next week.